You know, some people would say that making 300,000 gold per turn out of thin air might break the game, but ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to prove the opposite. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today you join me in Total War Attila. That's right, we're playing yet another Total War game because I absolutely love these bad boys. Total War games, they are my bread and butter. Trust me, these are some of the greatest strategy games in existence. So today, naturally, we're going to be breaking Total War Attila. But how might you ask? Well, there's a few ways to break Total War Attila. You could, I don't know, for example, play as a Hun and just spam out a ton of cavalry units and take over the world. It's surprisingly easy. However, no, I'm not interested in any of that. Instead, we're going to start a brand new Grand Campaign. As you can see in the Grand Campaigns, we could be a nomadic tribe, part of the Roman Empire, maybe one of the Eastern Empires, a Great Migrator, a Barbarian Kingdom, or a Desert Kingdom. However, today we will instead be playing as the Eastern Roman Empire, led by Flavius Arcadus Augustus. Now these guys technically have an initial challenge of very hard, which is why we'll be playing at normal difficulty. But they have a very, very special trait, which is going to allow us to completely and utterly shatter the game. If we go down here and see faction traits, we can see that they are an economic powerhouse, which means that they receive a plus 5% on whatever they have in their treasury at the end of the turn. So this is rather interesting, because that means if you have 100 gold in your treasury, treasury in you end the turn, you start the next turn with five extra gold. Now that's not too much, but is there a cap on this? Surely there's a cap on this game, developers. You wouldn't let me have something like a million and generate something ridiculous like 50,000 a turn, would you? Oh, you would. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the game, where today we will be destroying the Eastern Roman Empire. So sit back, relax, ready your warm cups of tea from the greatest empire known to man, the British Empire, and get excited for some more glorious spiffing Brit. And hey, you know what? If you're feeling saucy already, you can give the video a like, and that would be very generous of you. And moi, you lovely bugger. Right, time for us to dive right on in there. And here we are in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Our first mission is quite simply be ready for war. And all we have to do to get 2,000 is to survive five years. That doesn't seem too bad. Well, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. Welcome to Total War Attila, where this game is literally all about slamming the Roman empires with completely meme armies that they have no way of countering against. So let's take a look at our empire. Whereabouts do we stand? Well, we have all of these settlements here in Greece, and then we stretch all the way through modern day Turkey, and then we can slide all the way down through here into roughly Israel, and we can go all the way up to Egypt. Now, all of these settlements are brilliant. Well, I say brilliant. They're actually a tad trash. They're severely underdeveloped, and almost all of them are going to be facing massive issues regarding squalor. Squalor is this game's way of stopping cities from going at ridiculous speeds and not actually maintaining proper sanitation. For this reason, we're going to have to build something in most of our settlements to actually protect us from all of this ridiculous squalor. This is especially important in some of our larger cities, where if we get hit by squalor, our earnings are going to go through the floor. So, Constantinople, in their local city over here, Marconopolis, we're going to be building a lovely fountain, and that's going to provide plus two sanitation and hopefully save us. But before we sort out all of that, let us first settle some of our diplomatic issues. If we go into diplomacy, we can see that we, the Eastern Roman Empire are at war with four major factions. Now, all of the people we're at war with are hordes, so they technically hold no land, but they do field ridiculously powerful armies. Now, in the north, we are technically at war with the Visigoths, the Alans, and the Huns, who are all tribes, and in the south, we're at war with the Tanukids. Yes, these are some very strange looking funky chaps. I mean, to be fair, when it comes to funky chaps, we have Mr. Plato face over here, who's actually the leader of the entire Eastern Roman Empire. That's right, the leader of the Eastern Roman Empire is a seven. 17 year old Plato man. Why is this empire even functioning? Oh well, I have no idea. But nonetheless, those lovely factions down to the south, they're willing to peace out. They fear us for some reason. So naturally, yes, we'll peace out with them. So in the south, we've managed to deal with one horde, which is actually really useful. Because we now have that horde dealt with, we can divert some of our armies which are sat down here back up to a more northern front, where they can hopefully deal with some of the hordes which are going to start ravaging our northern lands. So we're going to take this legion over here, put them to a forced march, and run them all the way towards Constantinople.
Constantinople. So I have two armies moving over from the Middle East to help out in Northern Greece, and the two armies that I have up here are going to be getting developed, so that hopefully we can deal with the two hordes which are currently marching around our lands. Because these guys are just going to run around tearing up our settlements for quite a while. Anyway, whilst we're running around our lands, it's time we make sure we get those public fountains sorted, because otherwise Squalor will genuinely get completely and utterly out of control. So there we go, I've just run around our lands, making sure that we've got a load of fountains getting built, so that not only will we be generating money from our lovely culture, because guess what, fountains make money apparently, we'll also be solving this ridiculous squalor issue. Now sadly we are ending the turn of only 125 gold in our treasury, meaning we won't be making much from our lovely interest. But nonetheless, we'll just sort out our research and we'll move into the next turn. Now, as much as I would love to rush down getting rid of all of this corruption and also generating wealth from cultural buildings, it really is in our best interest to rush the research of hereditary service. This not only unlocks better units, it will also allow us to keep upkeep costs down for our armies. And trust me, the Eastern Roman Empire, we have some of the largest armies this game has to offer. Anyway, nonetheless, it's time for us to move into the next season. And so our first turn comes to an end, and we'll have to see what the AI will do. Probably the hordes are naturally going to start sacking all of our settlements. Lo and behold, that's exactly what they're doing. Classic hordes. Now these hordes are naturally attacking our tiny little gold mining province that really can't defend itself. So we're just going to auto-resolve this bad boy and lose the fight. But hey, you know what? As long as they've done a bit of damage, I don't mind. Speaking of damage, they killed 92 men. Okay, that was quite prophetic. So the horde is likely to go on in there and sack it as soon as possible. And there we go, they plundered it for 749. <sighs> That's gonna hurt. Now my lovely general has run all the way from Rome to hopefully try and fight off the Visigoths who have rocked up over here. Now we could fight this on a battle map, but come on ladies and gentlemen, you know me, I'm British. If I can make someone else fight for me, I'm going to make them. So we're going to send in our army with an aggressive battle stance, mostly due to the fact that they have a ridiculous amount of long range units. So it's time to go aggressive. And it was a decisive victory, most of their force has been wiped out. As you can see, because I've built all of these fountains, so Suddenly all of these lovely settlements have increased public order and happiness. Sanitation is finally sorted. You know what? Things are going rather well. The only thing that's not going well is I've run out of food. But eventually when we get some new farms up and running, it should all be fine. Anyway, let us march our armies towards safety. So we're currently in autumn of our first year, and so far we've managed to damage some of the hordes and trap them in effectively a siege of Seredica. We're just going to flank in from behind with two armies and we should be able to take them out soon. To our north though, as you can see, the hordes are making their advances on the Western Roman Empire. Now the Western Roman Empire are technically our valued friends and allies, but realistically speaking, I don't mind. Because I can just sweep into their lands and steal them once they've all collapsed. Now as you can see, we have of course the Alans in our land. This is quite a risky thing indeed. These hordes are likely to tear up most of our cities and cause an absolute mess. But don't worry, because the Western Roman Empire can levy troops. Meaning we can literally buy from the army that's invading us. Now the army that's invading us had two units of Germanic band, so I've just recruited both of them, and the joy of having them is that the horde attacking us doesn't have them, meaning that the horde attacking us has just been reduced to cavalry and some war dogs. And there we go, we've grabbed hereditary service, meaning that our upkeep for all melee units is down by 10%. This is going to be huge at saving us money, but as you can see, our predicted income is now at 7,000, which is certainly a vast improvement over where we started in this game. And also, I've decided to upgrade my gold mine to a goldsmith's. This is only possible by using gemstones, which guess what, we also start out with in this empire. By building all of that, we're able to get up to the next level, which now grants us 1,200 from commerce. And now that we've settled all of the issues in our north, we can finally sell off all of our costly mercenaries, because come on, we don't need to be spending all of that money on terrible units, and we're now in a good position. The Huns are actually just on our border, really, really close by in fact, and surprise, surprise, we're at war with the Huns. And even though he dislikes Western Romans, we can actually go over here hit peace treaty and see we have a moderate chance of success of actually peacing out of war with the Huns. That's right, the Huns. Oh, and classically, the Visgoths, who we managed to peace out with earlier, have now decided to declare war on us. Actually, this is a good thing, because it will strengthen our relationship with our allies. Oh, and naturally, they're just going to attack my settlements. How very kind of you. Now, for some reason, the Huns actually have an ever-increasing opinion of us. They're starting to like us more and more, so we're going to peace out with them. And there we go, we have peace with the Huns, and apparently next turn, our relationship is going to improve from minus 14 to plus 59. That seems fine to me. 
Okay, remember this is uh, the leader of the Huns who is meant to absolutely hate the Romans. He seems to actually kind of like us for some reason. Now the reason why it's great being the Eastern Roman Empire is because the Western Roman Empire has a ton of money and they have basically no way of spending it. Which is wonderful for us because it means they're just going to be selling us tons of trash. And by trash I mean wars against factions like for example whoever these people are. The Quadians? I'm never gonna meet them in my life, but you'll give me two grand to be at war with them, so why not? Thanks, Western Roman Empire. I promise I'll head on over there as soon as possible to fight them. Oh my good lord, and uh, in the north it would appear that the Saxons have set holy fire to somewhere in France. Good thing we don't have to face any of those hordes anytime soon. Wait, what do you mean we technically do? Oh god. And an interesting development for our game. Sadly, Attila. That's right, Attila the Hun has finally been born. It's 400 AD, and he has finally arrived in this world. This is going to completely and utterly destroy us if we're not too careful. Eventually, we're going to have so much money on our bank, we don't actually need cities. In fact, if we get reduced down to just Constantinople, we'll be fine. Because if we have just Constantinople, but say, I don't know, a hundred thousand lying around, we'll still be generating a comfortable five grand per turn only from our interest, which is not bad at all. And we're now ending this turn with a comfortable gain of 15,000 for the next turn. The reason why it seems to be going up so fast is as you can see, our income from other slowly keeps increasing. This does of course factor in income from from, you guessed it, interest. Oh, I can't wait to see how high we can get it. And also, every single turn I've been making my faction leader embezzle funds, which is gaining us a nice comfortable 540 on the side. You know, this is just one of those classic battles that always happens for the Roman Empire. Of my greatest army up here of 2,000 proud Romans facing off against a single Germanic levy. Ah. <sighs> This seems perfectly balanced. How on earth we lost 24 men, I will have no idea. As you can see, our income is now up to an almost amazing 20,000 per turn. How on earth have we done it? Well, if we go into the economy settings, we can see that our army upkeep is down to 12,000. The main reason why is because we've decided to get a ton of Master of Soldiers. This allows minus free upkeep, so we're now facing a minus 6% upkeep, which is not bad at all. And how much money per turn are we making from interest? A good question. We can see that we're Currently generating 1,807, and next turn we'll be generating 2,663. You know, this game's actually going quite well. I've managed to pick up a good few group of characters, mostly priests, because priests are effectively the brilliant all-rounders in this game. They keep unrest low, and they also have some crazy wacky benefits. This gentleman provides plus 20% wealth from commerce when he gets deployed in a province. Absolutely crazy. So naturally I'm going to sail him down to here, where our commerce income is at its highest. Now we have managed to cross over into the 100,000 mark on our treasury, so if we check our finances and go all the way over to the summary, we can see that on our interest we are gaining 5,700 a turn, and on this turn we're going to be making 5,992, and so on and so forth. So basically each turn, even though we have all of our lovely buildings, we're going to be creating 6,000 just from the interest of our existing wealth. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, you joined me back the following day after I've started recording this. Although for you there's no change at all. For me it just means that I've had about 40 cups of tea in between recording sessions. Equally I expect you to have consumed at least 4 cups of tea in the time that this video has been on for. Also what tea are you drinking? I kinda wanna know. I know a lot of people stick to English breakfast but sometimes you can get a bit spicy. I go for something wild. Or you could just drink coffee and make me exceedingly disappointed. Anyway, let's dive back into the game. It's turn 42 and we're sat on a nice pile of 180,000 gold and we pull in about 33,000 per turn. Now if we check our economy we can go over to our summary and we see that last turn we generated 8,500 just from our interest and next turn we're going to be generating 9,400. It's so basically due to the amount of income we're generating and also the amount we're generating from interest we currently get an extra thousand income from interest per turn meaning at the end of this turn we get 9,000 the next turn 10,000, 11,000, 12,000. Now this is a lot of money. If we take a look at our provinces over here and sort by wealth, we can see that our highest earning province is Insular or Rentalis, generating 8,000. But most of our entire 
of regions only generate between 3,000 and 1,000. And yet we're generating more than that just from interest alone. Oh, now this was relatively unexpected. Honestly, I was not particularly prepared for this one, but it would appear the Sassanid Empire has decided to declare war on me. That wasn't particularly kind of them, considering, you know, we had a non-aggression pact and we were actually relatively friendly, but nonetheless, it looks like we have to go to war. Now, I've decided that we might as well pull our way out of Africa. It's not really worth our time, so I'm going to peace out with the Garmentians and they're going to give me 8,000. Now that's a bit of easy money, because that's going straight into our lovely fund of infinite wealth. As you can see, we're up to 250,000 already, and we're gaining 42,000 a turn. Hang on a second, this seems to be getting pretty high. Now, for some strange reason, the Roman separatists, who look suspiciously very similar to me, are willing to offer a military alliance. And in fact, they're even going to pay me for it. You know what? You're in. Because as you can see, I'm at war with a lot more people than you are. So that's fine with me. As you can see in the top left, our treasury has kind of gone a bit strange and the number has actually shrunk because we're now about to move into the 300,000 mark, generating 40,000 per turn. Now that's not bad at all. Right, I've decided we should also do some naming for some of our units. So we have the army up here in the north, the northern speed bumps. These guys are designed to be the speed bump whenever the Huns or another random horde decides to attack us. We then have our next army, which is Sir Nigel the Magnificent, comprised of a general unit and a ton of common tensors. Then we have our two armies which are about to invade, hopefully the Sassanid Empire. We have Le Big Boys and El Bait. Down in Alexandria we have THE Big Boys, another incredibly large army, El Distracto Force 9000, and Steve and the Lads. These are the legendary Roman armies which will make Rome proud and also defend it whilst we accrue ridiculous amounts of money via interest. So a few turns later it's 407 AD and as you can see we're sat at 300,000 in our bank and we have a predicted income of around about 50,000 per turn. Now of course if we go over to our economy, our interest last turn generated us 16,000 and this turn it's going to generate us 18,000. Not bad at all. We have a effectively reached a point where we can get rid of taxes entirely and we can almost pay for everything off of the interest. 20,000 per turn from interest alone basically makes interest our highest earner and is paying for all of our armies simultaneously. Oh no, it's happened ladies and gentlemen. The Western Roman Empire has finally called me in to defend against the Huns. Now, this is an issue. We can decline and break our alliance, which is going to make the Western Roman Empire very upset, but realistically, we are not in a state to fight the Huns. So I'm afraid, Western Roman Empire, you're gone. Oh, actually, now that I've noticed it, uh, yes, the wonderful Western Roman city which was nearby and protecting my cities has just been burnt to the ground. Probably not the best sign of things to come for the Eastern Roman Empire, but I'm sure we'll be fine. It's currently turn 53 and I'm about to go on the offensive. We have the big boys over here, Elbait and Le Big Boys, and with this combined force, we're going to take out the enemy. First, we're going to march the big boys into Sassanid territory. Ah, we've discovered something rather interesting. A ridiculous amount of men. Let's see if it's actually even possible for us to take them out. This is one of the largest fights I've ever seen. And for some reason, we can make it a night attack, which I'm pretty sure means the reinforcements aren't going to be coming. Ah, oh, this is going to be a good old auto resolve right here. And there we go, we managed to get rid of a single army of the Sassanid Empire. But at what cost? Yes, I think the Western Roman Empire is done for. Most of their cities have been taken, and they are but a fragment of what they used to be. And for some reason, the Arabian Separatists, bearing in mind this is a faction that starts out right here, have managed to lose their homelands, yet simultaneously migrate across the Mediterranean and sniped the city of Palma over here, just off of the coast of Spain. The Arabian Separatists are at home in Spain. Okay, that's fine. You know, game, you you work in your mysterious ways. Keep your secrets. And we've begun our first assault into enemy territory. Oh, surprise, surprise, the Sassanids have actually pulled back, which should allow me to just waltz into their city. Perhaps we burn it down, perhaps we take it. Who knows? And the Huns are marching through my lands. Okay, that's a bit worrying. 
Now to our north, the Huns are very close to our border, so I'm going to try and see if we can negotiate some kind of non-aggression pact. Now it is quite a low chance that they'll actually accept, so we're going to have to throw in a fair bit of money. The game automatically wants me to offer a payment of 46,000, mostly due to the fact that we have so much money lying around. But no, I will instead offer them 10,000, which is a ridiculous amount of money. Oh, and they're really likely to accept that. Well, that's fine, we can drop it down a bit. How about 5,000? That's suddenly low. Okay, 8,000. That's moderate. And they've accepted. There we go, the Huns will now no longer attack. Yes. Oh, and also I've been using the funds embezzlement system this game has to offer. I'm not too sure roughly how it judges embezzlement, but I've managed to gain an extra 2,000 just from having my emperor embezzle a bit of money around. And then when one of my heirs does it, I also get another 1,800. Effectively, I could have all of my family members embezzle funds, and we could probably gain about 10,000 a turn just from fund embezzlement. You know what, in one turn I've managed to pick off two Sassanid armies and in fact I think I'm about to make it a third. Oh my goodness yes it's a third. I've managed to wipe three Sassanid armies all in one go. Good lord this is incredible. So now if we check our diplomacy and go to the Sassanids. Oh, I wonder if you guys would like peace right about now. No? You still don't want peace? That's fine, I'll make you one piece. As you can see, we've now hit the 500,000 mark when it comes to our money. Not bad at all. Oh no. Oh, good lord no. The Huns have declared war on us. Well... This is a bit of an issue, uh, one that I'm not particularly prepared for, but provided they don't attack any of our settlements this turn, hopefully, we can survive this one against the Huns. No, because they are right in my lands, of course. Well, hopefully if I just knock out a few of their armies, they'll get bored and run away. But hey, the good news is I'm able to peace out with all of the barbarian factions to the north, because they also hate the Huns. And I'd much rather be at war with just the Huns than literally everyone and the Huns. Wow, well, we've actually managed to take the capital of the Sassanids. It was a very difficult fight, we're going to need to do a massive replenishment after this, but that was a decisive victory. And we have taken the capital of the Sassanid Empire. This land is now Roman. Now can we please peace out of this place? And finally, they've decided to accept the peace out. Oh, goodness. That means we're finally now at peace over here, and we can work on rebuilding our settlements, and also improving everything we've just inherited from the Sassanid Empire. We're going to be able to eventually make a bit of money out of this, but for the moment it's just going to be a sinkhole for cash. And I can now finally start sending some good old armies back up north to hopefully defeat the Huns. Because yes, they're coming and the Huns wait for no person. Now we have one Hun army in our lands already and they're doing a very bit of aggressive raiding, which is actually rather annoying. So I'm just going to hire some mercenaries and attack the Huns who are currently making a mess in my land. So we're going to be fighting off against Mughal the Hun, whoever this lovely sausage is, and apparently we can completely decimate his army because he decided to march into Rome with an army comprised of slingers, really, really light cavalry, and four mercenary onagers. Now I'd like to point out mercenary onagers cost 1,000 gold per turn just to look after. And he is four of them. This army is costing four grand on some units that he can't even defend. Honestly, if I had any sense of strategy, I'd keep this army alive as it will be hemorrhaging income for the Huns. Nonetheless, we're just going to get rid of it. There we go, their army is now gone. You know what, we're going to kill some captives, because everyone likes it when you kill captives of the Huns. Now to get rid of all of those mercenaries that I hired, because guess what, surprise surprise, I don't want to spend 262 gold per turn maintaining some mercenary Germanic warbands. So there we go, we have peace in the east, peace towards the west, and towards the north we are basically only at war with the Huns, which makes things very simple for me. So yes, this turn we've managed to kill a rank 5 general of the Huns, which is actually an incredible achievement, and we are generating around about 55,000 a turn just from our general income, and we have a ton of money lying around. Honestly, things are getting even better. Oh excluding the fact that the Huns have just decided to invade, and they're going to be able to take this city. Oh, please do not raise it, Huns. I swear, if you dare raise this... And yes, they've just raised the entire city. Well, that's just the Huns doing Hun things again. 
Classic Huns. Now, I think I'm going to try and take out the Huns in the north because they just keep on bringing more forces. Here's another huge army from the Huns. There's a very small army here in the south and of course the massive army in the middle. So we need to focus on destroying them one at a time else we're going to be caught out. And sadly this means we're going to need a lot of mercenaries. Luckily for me, we have a lot of money. So mercenaries, they're actually not too bad. And sadly that fight was a valiant defeat, but honestly not too bad for us. Other than a lot of losses around the board, we massively hurt the Hun forces as well. The only issue I have is that my armies have technically retreated into the path of the Huns again, but hopefully they won't be attacking us. Emphasis on the hopefully. And it is exactly as I feared. The Huns have attacked from the north. We're not really in a position to actually survive this one, so we're going to have to play on the defensive. And hopefully, our army did not get killed. Oh my goodness, our general is still alive. The reinforcing army is completely dead though, but you know, you got to take your victories from somewhere. Oh, no, they killed him anyway. Well, that's the Emperor dead, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and we're getting attacked once again. And yes, the Emperor is dead, so a brand new Emperor has stepped up into the fold. Rest in peace, our one Emperor. Oh, and apparently that's brought a good omen, so plus two public order for everyone. Well, you know, you got to take your small victories in life. The army is marched up north, and sadly, even though we have a really, really good army here to help out... They're going to get caught up as cannon fodder. And, well, of course, the Huns decided to burn down that settlement as well. Well, it's not like I needed it. Thank you very much, Huns. That's the second time you've done that. And that's another one of my armies absolutely, completely, and utterly defeated by the Huns. Well, we've just got to recruit more men, then. We have three armies down, and the Huns just keep on wandering. I'm wondering if we could just cash pay them to go away so I can focus on my exploits. You know what? Let's give it a try. So, Mr. Hun, I would like a peace treaty. You're not very happy about that so instead I'm going to offer a payment of 20,000 to just bugger off. Oh and of course you'll accept that. Can I reduce that to, I don't know, 10,000 and you'll go away? Nope, that one's not acceptable. What about 15,000? And there we go, we've 17,000, we now have peace with the Huns and they can go away. There we go, hopefully the Huns will now start to leave us alone. But just in case if they don't, we're going to spam out quite a few more units. And so there we go, the Huns have now gone. And as you can see, we have 600,000 lying around in our bank and we generate 60,000 per turn. So just how much are we generating from interest? Well, we can see that we are currently generating 30,000 from interest alone, meaning interest covers all of our expenses. That's all of our army's upkeeps, all of the maintenance of our buildings, and our navy, of which for some reason we have a very small one. So effectively, the interest is fueling now the bulk of our income. Ah, and the Saxons are wanting to peace out, and they're willing to offer us 1,000. You know what, Saxons? I'll take it. That's one less person I'm at war with. I think over the last 10 turns, we've managed to half the amount of factions we're at war with, which is quite a good turnover rate, if I'm being honest. And we're pulling ever so closer towards that 1 million mark. Remember, when we hit 1 million, that's 50,000 per turn gained on interest. 50,000. Now oh, that's going to be game-breaking. And this is going to be the turn, ladies and gentlemen. The turn where we finally move into 1 million gold. We currently have 970,000. We're so close. And as soon as we manage that, whew, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not too sure what happens, but we will most certainly be making a lot of money. If we go to our trade and finance screen, we can see that last turn we generated 45,000 alone just from our interest, and next turn it's looking to be 48,000. We generate more from interest than we do from taxes and trade combined. Ladies and gentlemen, it's become our top earner. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Total War Attila. I don't think anyone's ever hit one million before, but you know what? Someone had to, and of course it was going to be me. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. One million. As you can see, the number has kind of gone a little skew with, but good lord, bugger me sideways with a teabag. That is a ridiculous quantity of money. Are we even at war with anyone? I suppose we're at war with the Picts. Picts, I don't suppose you guys want peace. Yes, right? That's one easy peace out. How about Aaron? Would you guys like like some peace. Yep, that's peace with Aaron as well. So who are we now at war with? We're at war with the Vandals and the Franks. Right, Franks, what will it take to peace you guys out? Oh, absolutely nothing, and I'm out of war with you. And who's left? Just the Vandals down here in Africa. And they're going to peace out of their own accord as well. 
So there we go. The Eastern Roman Empire is at war with absolutely no one. All right, and so now that I've pieced out of everyone, everyone likes me, which means I can just set up some trade agreements. So I've organized some trade, and we will now be making 12,000 a turn from trade alone. And that's to add on top of our wonderful interest that we're generating. Oh my goodness, this game, what have I done to you? 85,000 a turn! Oh my goodness, we're not even on turn 100 yet! What is going on? I'm so sorry, Creative Assembly, for breaking your game, but hey, you know, you give me enough cups of tea and anything's possible. But I'm not done yet, and if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, hey, maybe you've finally decided that this far into the video is a point where you're willing to give it a like. You know what? Mwah. I respect you for that. Certainly it would be rather useful considering I think I've spent probably about three days recording and editing this bad boy. Oh, but of course, you know, we did finish all of those wars and the Sassanids have decided, bugger it, I'm going to declare war on you too. So it's war with the Sassanids and all of their crappy little friends. And of course they're going to put my settlements under siege. Of course they are. Honestly, I'm wondering if we just pay them off for 50 grand and get them to go away. We are currently on turn 68 and you know what I must say, things have taken an interesting turn. We have 1 million in gold and we make about 90,000 per turn. Not bad at all. Our interest is basically just snowballing and snowballing to the point where we are gaining over 4,000 per turn in increase on how much we're getting from our interest. Oh my goodness, this is perfectly balanced, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think any, you know, very cheeky Brit could exploit this for profit. Oh, and it would appear the game has actually just crashed. Well, game, I'm not letting you get away from me that easily. I've still got work to do. Now, this is the turn, ladies and gentlemen. The turn where we finally cross into making a hundred thousand a turn. And we're doing so whilst technically losing a war at the same time. We are generating over 60,000 just from our interest alone, which is absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to see where it's going to end up. Now the situation has finally developed to a point where the Sassanids are willing to peace out. We managed to take their capital in two other cities and now they are willing to peace out provided we give them 50,000. You know what, we've reduced you to strength rank 5, I don't think you're going to be coming back, I'm going to be taking this peace. I just want peace for my empire where I don't have to deal with pesky armies popping up all the time. Now we've had some good progress as of late, we've managed to effectively peace out completely from our war of the Sassanids and we are currently bringing our armies home. And other than that we've mostly just been putting down rebellions because trust me, there's been a lot of rebellions. But as you can see our money is sat at a very comfortable 1.7 million. This could be the most money anyone's ever had in a total war game. And some of you might be wondering, well just how much are you making from the interest? Well we go trade and finance, we can see that we're making 89,000 just from our interest alone. And we are profiting at around about 100,000 per turn. This is whilst we are spending 30,000 on our army. Honestly, you know what, we're going to lower the tax a bit. Right, to speed up this process I'm going to basically skip forward a ton of turns and get back to you once I'm going to say we cross the 3 million mark, see how much we have. Now at the moment we're about to cross into the 2 million mark, which means our income from interest will rise to 100,000. So yes, we have all of those lovely things to look forward to. Right, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. We now have 3 million gold in our treasury. The Roman Empire has never been this wealthy. In fact, the Roman Empire is just outright phenomenal at the moment. Anyway, now that we're at 3 million, just how much are we making? Well, we'll be generating 150,000 per turn just in interest. That is more than I think any empire in this game can generate, even if they took over the entirety of the world. You just physically can't generate this much money. But of course, life finds a way. And so we're now making almost 200,000 per turn in profit, with our tax rates at the lowest possible. So I'll jump back to you when we reach 5 million. Well, we knew it wouldn't be as easy as just waiting until I hit 5 million, didn't we? Of course, the nation of Aaron has now decided they'd like to go to war against me. Why? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. But hey, what it does mean is that we are now at war with the Sassanid Empire again. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's back to round three of the Sassanid Wars. 
Right, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. We're currently probably on our best turn yet. It's 419 AD and we now have 5 million in our treasury. If we check our finances we can see we're generating well over 250,000 just from interest alone. But of course we are still at war with the Sassanids and it would be very nice to try and get rid of them. So we're going to use a few little cheesy things to try and get them out of our way. Now as you can see there's three armies marching around here which is technically quite a lot to deal with. But don't worry, we can technically take them on one by one. So how you want to do this is march one army around right about here, march another reinforcement army right next to it, attach a fourth army for good measure, and you know what I'm feeling lucky, let's whack it on a fifth. Meanwhile we'll keep one army back to defend. And now that we're here it's time we find our best general to attack with, who would happen to be this lovely man right here, and hit the attack button. Now naturally he's a smart person he's going to retreat, but this creates an issue for the AI, as it allows us to move in and take on the next force. Now this army isn't as sensible and is wanting to fight, so you know what, we'll give them an auto-resolve. Now that's two Sassanid armies destroyed, but of course I think we have three more to go. But don't worry, with all of our armies positioned in one massive turtle blob, there is physically no way they can defeat us. Anyway, that's basically the Sassanids dealt with. I think now we're going to actually try and wipe them out once and for all and burn down all of their settlements. And then once that's sorted, we should be able to sit back, relax and just turtle on our 250,000 a turn income. Honestly, I have no feasible way of actually spending all of this money in one turn. If I were to upgrade every single building in the Empire, I'd still have way too much money floating around. Heck, I could probably disband all my armies and retrain them all in one go and still be able to turn a profit on that turn. My oh my oh my, if you don't deal with the Eastern Empire early, trust me, this is one ridiculous snowball. Anyway, you know what? I think I've basically done everything I can in this game. I've pushed the Sassanid Empire all the way back to this single province over here in Saudi Arabia. And yes, Attila the Hun has now taken control of his faction in 420 AD. I know, good timing Attila. But we have reached a point of 6 million wealth. The truth of the matter is that even if Attila the Hun were to attack us and defeat one of our armies, we can simply bring up another army the next turn and recruit infinite mercenaries into the army at basically no expense. As you can see, we are now making 300,000 per turn on interest which, as you can guess, is completely and utterly broken. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I, the Spiffing Brit, using wonderful warm cups of tea, have managed to break Total War. Attila. I know, I absolutely really enjoy this game. It's not as popular as Total War Rome or Total War Rome 2, but it is still quite a fun little game that runs suspiciously better than Total War. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, then hey, feel free to give the video a like. It really does help me out. And as always, a huge thank you to you lovely chaps in the community who leave comments, and also those of you who decide to become Patreons. Thank you very much. These videos would not be possible without you. You are all majestic and lovely sausages slash tea drinkers slash just majestic gentleman indeed. And if you're looking for a video to watch next, then I strongly recommend the one on screen now if you enjoyed this one. Anyway, I'll see all of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day. Farewell.